Hi, everyone. You also have to dream about your revolution, not just build it. These words of Pierre Boulez have driven us Buffet Crampon uh, when considering it to apply to the clarinet to two main questions. The first question is, what is the dream of the clarinet player of the 21st century in terms of acoustic, in terms of playability, or in terms of instrument design? The second question is, uh, what can we do, Buffet Crampon, to make this dream come true? And does it mean a revolution for, for the clarinet? These two questions will be the subject of our today's streaming live from Mont Factory, right in the middle of where we are creating these instruments, these wonderful instruments. And I'm very happy and very pleased to experience these uh, answers with you and with a very uh, active uh, support and contribution of a high number of musicians who have made a big effort to come uh, from so many countries. To come here in Mont, in the Mont factory, uh, the heart of Buffet Crampon, but also in our different locations in the world, in Tokyo, in Beijing, and in Jacksonville in the US. They, these musicians will uh, have just tried the instrument and they will give us their feedback very soon. I want to thank them very warmly for being with us today. I also want to thank those who have directly contributed to this uh, revolution. As you know, in Buffet Crampon, we are relying on a dream team of testers. Michel Arignon, Paul Meyer, Nicolas Balderou, and Eric Barret, who are the head of the development for all our new instruments and with high success with the, Tos the Tosca, the Divine, the Legend, and more recently, the Gala. But this time, due to the high ambition of the project, we have decided to complete this dream team by the team of the dream and by adding the highly valuable contribution of Martin Frost, who, of course, everybody knows, and who has joined us at the beginning of the story 3.5 years ago. The initial idea of Martin and the team was to explore new acoustic territories and to try to set up new standards, a new paradigm for the clarinet of the 21st century, trying to un give answers to all expectations. This ambition was very high, and I want to say that today the result is over overcoming our expectation. It's absolutely a great success. And that is what we are going to experience with you today. And to go further in this experience, I would uh, leave you now in the expert hands of Grégory de Mailly, who is a group product specialist for the entire range of clarinet for Buffet Crampon. It's true, it is a very special launch uh, today. Actually, today is a day we have been looking forward to for more than three and a half years, maybe four, if we consider the birth of the idea. And every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Buffet Crampon has been very fortunate to introduce a few of these in the clarinet industry. In our history, we have had a couple of great figures who have moved the line of handmaking uh, a clarinet. They all put their breakthrough ideas in the design of a sound or just a key mechanism, but their characters were already and always supported by a close and a true partnership with great musicians. For example, in the 19th century, we had Louis-Auguste Buffet and Yassine Closet were maybe uh, the first to mastermind an incredible acoustic and mechanical revolution as examples, the adaptation of the mobile rings made by Bum on the flute, and also and above all being the ones who invented the famous sound signature of our instrument uh, that we call today the polycylindrical bore design. Later, we had uh, Robert Carré and Jacques Lancelot, who have amplified this movement of our history 
with the R13, the BC20, and the RC clarinets. And as a result, uh, those models still remain the masterpieces of our product development strategy. More recently, in 2004, the Tosca clarinet came onto the global market, turning upside down the traditional codes with an iconic keywork and a very typical sound, as well as giving uh, direction to follow uh, by our, our competitors all over the world. A bit earlier, in uh, 1998, maybe something that is our pretty strongest pride at Buffet Crampon, the Green Line material. It is a, ma a material that came up from a demanding brief, actually a brief made of uh, ecological goals and aiming the frightening crack issue feared by all clarinetists and oboists. But today, altogether, wherever we are sitting uh, in the world, we want to initiate the 21st century's revolution in thinking, as you said, uh, Jérôme, what is a dream clarinet? What is a clarinet without its specific uh, weaknesses, uh, very well known by all clarinetists? Our team here has dreamed it for so long, and now they cannot wait to tell what they feel about it. I'm going to reveal the new instrument in a few seconds, but before, please, just relax and imagine. A new acoustic balance that gives unbelievable uh, opportunities in creating new colors and new dynamics. A clarinet with a wider low register, full of sound, rich and warm. A clarinet with a high register, stable, right in tune and secure as ever. And finally, a batch of new features that will allow you to revisit the clarinet repertoire and create more. I think it's enough suspense for today. Here is the new Buffet Crampon clarinet, BC21. Hello Martin, hello Nicola, hello Michel. Uh, unfortunately, Paul cannot be with us today, but uh, he has a special message. Dear friends, dear colleagues, today is a very important day uh, for us in the climate world. Uh, unfortunately, I am not here with you in Mantes at the Buffet Crampon factory. Uh, because I am in Japan in quarantine uh, before uh, my new concerts. Uh, the launch of this instrument is very important for us, as it has been a long way uh, to prepare it. Uh, this instrument is very uh, particular, and I hope you will have as much fun as we have to play on it. See you soon. Thank you very much. I'm so happy and impressed to be with you today for the special day for uh, the presentation of uh, our new uh, BC21 B-flat clarinet. And uh, Martin, I have a question. Uh, if you have to describe uh, the sound overall uh, of this new BC21 compared to the uh, uh, regular clarinets, how do you, how do you describe it? Oh, it's a big question. I, I think what, I mean, first of all, I played on so many uh, buffet clarinets before and they were, of course, all fantastic and has all these, which is so uh, particular for, for, for buffet clarinets. Uh, what this, if you should compare it, I would say this clarinet has all these. It has the, 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 the timbre and the ping and the all that you can lean on, trust, but it has something more, I think. And that, if I try to describe it, it would be more... If I play on this clarinet, for example, in, on the recording for a whole day, the, the way that I play would develop through the day, I think. Because this clarinet has something that you can always discover and develop in, which I like. It's like a, a very good uh, 
uh, violin, like a Stradivarius. If, if you play on a new Stradivarius and you are not used to it, you will find things in it during the time that you are playing. And I think that opened up doors for the future in these kind of uh, ways. So the, the, the challenging thing for Buffet has always been because you want, we want to please everyone. We want to do clarinets that everyone thinks, ah, this is a great clarinet. And of course, this is a fantastic clarinet, but it also has a something that it wants to collaborate with you and it wants to, to it demands something for you as well. And that, I think, is a good way of thinking from Buffet's side. So it's like, you know, if you, if you compare it to a relation or, or when you stand in front of an orchestra, for example, you always should listen to the orchestra and try to learn something before you open your mouth and, and say something. And this is exactly the same. I play this kind of thing. Oh, wow, I feel like I can learn something from this. And, and that's a great feeling. And it's really a feeling that I, I it's, it's a sort of exciting the way that you can develop with this instrument. And uh, maybe you could see on the on the camera we have uh, uh, Nicola. A few years ago, you you are speaking together. Uh, you had asked me to develop the clarinet with the low E flat, and maybe how uh, you could see uh, on the camera the clarinet has a long uh, E flat, uh, one additional note. Mm -hmm. Could you speak about this? Yeah, I mean, it was a very special demand for, for me because uh, in, our, in our repertoire, we have so many pieces with the low E flat. I mean, in orchestra, of course, we, when you play Mahler symphonies or Wagner, you have some low E flats. Uh, when you play concertos, like if you play the Busoni uh, concertino, I mean, uh, we have the low E flat. When you want to play contemporary pieces, when you play the Berio Sequenza, for example, you have the low E flat. So there's so many, uh, there was so, so much frustration uh, about that. And uh, also, uh, I like to transpose a lot inside the orchestra. I like to keep my B flat just to be warm and to be absolutely in tune. And sometimes, of course, when you have some low E with the A clarinet, you were, I mean, you couldn't play the notes. So with this one, it will be a real big change for people playing uh, in orchestra wanting to, to transpose. And we discovered something new, because with this uh, fingering of the E flat, low E flat, if you use the register key, Michel, you could have a wonderful B flat to and uh, you explained me to play, for example, the beginning of uh, the Rhapsody of Debussy, you could immediately use this, this uh, fingering. I think uh, when you play the, this uh, B flat with the uh, E flat uh, fingering, you are already on the clairon. I mean, uh, you, you're more register. close of the B, yeah. natural yes. B. You are much more close, so the, the, the legato is much more e e easy. So C, do, it's, it's easier. You don't, have a, you don't have to play so C, do, you know, for... It's more natural. More, more natural, yeah. And also, um, the sound is uh, very rich, very rich. Uh, even uh, when you play the Bambre, so, you know, it's very difficult to play this <laughs> And uh, it's uh, much you, more... You mean we, we could use very easily this yes. finger, new fingering for the B-flat too? Yes, I, I, I think um, maybe it needs a little uh, accommodation... Uh, adaptation? Adaptation, yeah. To practice a little because the, the fingering are di different if you play uh, faster. Mm -hmm. And of course, to have uh, one additional note, the clarinet is longer compared to the regular clarinet, B flat clarinet, I mean. But on the new BC21, the weight of the instrument is lighter. Uh, Maybe you notice too, the, the, because the bell is shorter and we have one centimeter less compared to the regular bell. And do you feel, for example, Martin, do you feel a difference when you, when you play? Uh, this instrument is 20 grams less. The, uh, the weight is 
uh, 20 grams less compared to the Tosca or Legend. Yeah, just to, to add uh, what Michel was talking about, I think, because you start to talk about the bell now as well, I think it's uh, in this so great direction of, of adding fingerings for colors. I, I remember when I was studying, I, you always experiment with, with, with fingerings for colors. And I, I read, I think it was from, from Berman, when, when they spoke about different fingerings, they said always, in this time, they said always, I have lots of different fingering, but never for the technique, only for the, for the colors, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and now we have even more possibilities, which I think is fantastic. What, what Michel said that you can, of course you can use this B flat because you really like it and it's rich and so on, but you have at least three possibilities for the B flat now, these, these, and these. So you can choose for different music, different uh, type of, of fingerings for the colors. And um, of course, when, when we think about the bells, it's the same thing. Now we have a bell that is basically only for the sound. Mm -hmm. Because you can actually, you can literally take the bell off and still play uh, as normal, and it won't change the intonation as absolutely um, uh, not as much as the, the, the previous clarinets has. So we have also possibilities here. We can change bell, we can change the sound uh, timbre of the clarinet easily. Um, and about the weight, what you said, I'm not sure if you can feel the, the, the little, uh, the but, but it's definitely not, yes. it looks big, but it's, it doesn't feel heavy. But definitely. for the most of clarinetists, it was important that clarinet not, was not too exactly. heavy. Exactly, and it's not. It's, it's actually not easier. It, it, it's, it's lighter. And I would like to, to speak about the, the major characteristic of this new BC-21, but you cannot see the, the difference, because the difference is the ball inside, especially on the lower joint. We are working and design a very cylindrical ball inside without uh, any conicity. And this change, the resonance of the instrument, I mean, overall, not only on, on the low notes. Maybe, Nicolas, you, you could speak yeah, and explain this. Yeah, it's a very important aspect of uh, this clarinet. We already made a lot of researches uh, about that on the Legend, but we, we, uh, we went even further with this clarinet, of course, with its uh, longer uh, lower joint. And uh, when I play this clarinet, as you said, you feel very special resonance. You feel that the focus is coming immediately. I mean, you don't have to force. I mean, it's just coming. If you are just uh, blowing smoothly, then it just sounds. And the projection is amazing, uh, thanks to this um, lower joint. And when I played, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of the Bassett clarinet. Uh, Martin plays a lot, of course, and, uh, and also uh, of the German clarinet, I mean, which is also very cylindrical, and we made also a lot of uh, researches about the, about the German clarinet, and it um, it brings such a wonderful uh, homogeneity, and that's exactly what we uh, expected from this clarinet. I mean, something very equal, very focused, and very uh, homogeneous. And the question of the most of clarinet is: has this longer? Maybe it's a little bit more resistant. I mean, more difficult to blow. But could you speak about this sensation when you are playing on BC-21? Do you feel some resistance uh, to blow, or is it easy to blow? I mean, as Martin said, you, you get used to. I mean, it's just different. So, so the way of blowing is a little bit different. The focus is coming in a different way. Uh, so when you play it all day, I mean, you just adapt your, your playing, and then you discover many, many more things, and it's becoming absolutely natural. So I don't feel at all any resistance. I mean, it's just another concept and another, another aesthetic. And, uh, Nicola, uh, did, did you play uh, at the orchestra? Yeah, I did uh, well, play one full week in the orchestra. Okay. And it was such a treat. I mean, it was amazing. I, I didn't have to put a lot of energy. And the sound was so uh, well projected okay. in the room okay. and all of that all my colleagues just lost it. Oh, something is different, it's very nice, <laughs> but uh, what is it? And then they saw the lower joint and they said, well, what's that? And uh, now it's really comfortable. I mean, uh, I feel very great result with maybe a little bit less energy when you, yes. when you play. Yes. Thank you. 
I totally agree. I mean, if you speak about resistance, maybe you should speak about density, because that's also what, what Nicola means, that you, if, if you have a problem to sort of collect the sound all the time, that's, that's, that demands so much effort from you as a player. And this clarinet, it makes this focus like a great opera singer immediately, and you don't have to... to you can trust it in that way. Uh, and that's a fantastic development, I think. And we keep the spirit of the buffet sound, but with some, something very different. And this is a really a new innovation, because I think all the clarinetists we will test uh, today, and we we'll try, we'll feel the difference immediately compared to the other models. That's very important. Because you are playing, Nicola, on the, on the legend, uh, Martin, you are playing on the legend. Michel, you are playing on the tradition. But, I mean, this is a new concept of sound. And uh, do you think you could change now for, for this kind of uh, uh, new model BC21, Martin? If I could change from legend to... Yes. Beat, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, it's... it's uh, as as we already said, I mean, we play, of course, differently. Every clarinet player yes. is a unique, and and what I feel with this, as I said in the beginning, if you if you listen to clarinet player, if they change instrument, they probably get a a little bit of yes. Now it's different, but in after uh, two months, they will <laughs> they will sound about yes. the same, you know. But with this clarinet, it's so many things that for just take the B B flat, as as uh, Michel was talking about. The B flat is quite an important note, and it's, it's a, maybe the most problematic note on the clarinet. And now suddenly you have a different note. So of course the Brahms sonatas, both of them, will sound totally different. You will never doubt that this is a, B, a C21 when you hear the Brahms sonatas. And I immediately said, ah, I have to record them again, of course, because I have this clarinet. And there's so many pieces that you, you want to, de um, to rediscover again with this instrument. You want to, ah, I want to go with this repertoire again, I wanted to do this, mm. of course, because it's, it's a different, you have to treat it in a different way, like, and, and I think, therefore, it's full of excitement. If it takes a little bit of time, yes, absolutely, I, I have this clarinet for a few days, of course, it's, it's still a wow feeling, and when, when you have learned it, it's like Nicola said, you can really trust the sound to be full of density immediately, and you just have to, uh, and the projection is unbelievable good. And uh, for me, which is very important, it remains a um, buffet sound tradition. Yeah. You know, it's different, but you can listen. Totally. It's buffet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I like very much that. Yes, now uh, Paul wants to uh, make some comments uh, on the new uh, BC21. Uh, dear friends, I'm very happy uh, to share these uh, comments on this uh, new clarinet. One of the specific aspects of this instrument is the length of the lower joint. As you know, perhaps already, we have an E flat, uh, an extra note on the bottom of the clarinet. This changes everything actually in the way that I this instrument will be played. Instead of having the last note coming out from the bell, it comes from the hole here. And this is, a, I would say, a revolution. It helps very much uh, the fluidity of the instrument. There is uh, more facility in the staccato, in the articulation of the instrument, uh, because the, the air is, uh, goes, flows more naturally um, in the uh, instrument. On the upper register, when you action the, this key, which is the 12th uh, uh, keys, some people call it the octava keys, uh, it's the same process. Uh, we have a, a better uh, fluidity than before because, uh, again, the, uh, the, the low of the, the bottom of the, of the instrument doesn't open like this, but it stays more focused. And this is really fun to play. You will notice it automatically when you try it. Thank you very much.
Uh, I think the next trip now it's our uh, uh, friends, uh, Clanetis friends could test it and to have uh, their uh, own opinion about it. But thank you very much for your collaboration and for uh, this uh, wonderful time together. Thank you. Thank to you very much. Thank you.